Hi, I'm Bonnie, Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. You can follow me on Instagram at Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. So this is towards the end of February. Today is Friday and I'll probably get this uploaded and ready later tonight. I am in the middle of a, a busy time of work and I have a full afternoon, evening of work going on as soon as I am done with this. So um, I can see, I, was, I wasn't even gonna do the video because I could see the bags in my eye, under my eyes. <laughs> And when I'm tired, I can tell, I can just see this eye doesn't open as wide and it droops a little bit. But I thought, here we go. This is my stitching family. Um, and I'm not going to worry about me. I just want to talk about this quilt. And I had been meaning to get this, this video up at the beginning of the month. And here it is at the end of the month. So I thought it's either now or it's next year. So it's now. Um, I'm trying to get myself grouped together, so we are just going to roll with this. I am not going to stop the video, even if I mess up, because it's now or never, and, um, we're, we're moving forward, forward in life. Okay, it really is recording. I'm going to try something different this time. I want to really showcase this quilt. Now, on Instagram, at the beginning of the month, I had posted an overall picture and then close-ups of the specialty blocks. I wanted it up on the background for this video, even though you can see in the corner or on the edge, there is another quilt hanging behind this. I'm gonna get up on a chair and hopefully I don't fall and I'm gonna take it down in a moment. But this is in my sewing room and I have one wall that I'm able to display my quilts and I do have it on a curtain rod with the little hooks the circle hooks with the clamps on them. And yes, I've talked about them before and they can damage the fabric. Um, I'm careful when I release them so I don't pull before I release. I release the clamp and then I pull it down because it could end up ripping. If it was an antique quilt, I would not do it this way. I rotate the quilts quite often, but again, I, I don't always practice what I'm saying because for a while I didn't come in this sewing room after my mom's death and there was one of my favorite quilts on the wall, which I haven't even shown you guys yet, and it had been left up there for two years and, um, and it didn't have any damage to it. So this is just the way that I choose to do it because I get to sit at my, um, at my couch and I look at this quilt and I really enjoy having them here and rotating them according to the seasons when I'm hanging out in my sewing room. So that's why I like having this wall and it is better for me to display Oops, if I was just pointing things out to you. So what I would like to tell you about this quilt, let me stand here so I don't knock into that again, is it was a quilt from this book. Now I changed it a lot, like everything. This is an older book but hopefully, if you're interested, you can still get a hold of it. Apple quilt in the cabin. And I'm going to explain to you what Apple quilt is and that I didn't do this in this, in this um, quilt. I have two quilt tops, one finished and one in the works, from this book. This is the pattern. And so you can see, um, if I can show it like this, you can see the pattern and how much I changed it, yet this remains the same. The size of the blocks and the light and the dark and the different, and maybe it was, I was wondering, because it was so long ago that I made this, I was wondering, did I change those hearts up? But it, I can I can see those are, those pretty much are the shapes of the heart. I have this block, I have this block done a little bit differently and I believe though that, oh, I'm, I have, I guess, this shape of a block. Maybe that's where I got those shapes of the block. Everything else I changed. It was inspired because my sister had made a quilt pretty similar to this one, and I loved it. So I bought the book, and I embarked on making it. And I, I called this quilt, I named it, I don't know what it's called in here, Be My Valentine. 
I named it First Love because it was one of the first quilt tops that I put together. And it really was that first love of, I love this. I love making quilts and I like this whole process. It was a big learning curve for me, this quilt. I, I saw the label and it was, I started it 2007, finished it 2011. That's not bad. I have some that have been in process for 15 years. So, um, so some of the things particular about it, I may have forgotten. Oh, and I'm going to have to dig in. Oh, again, I'm not, I'm not going to stop this because this is, this is it or not. One of the things I need to get, I'm going to have to run over and get it. It's just on the other side of the room. I don't even know how to pause. I'm not going to worry about it. So, um, let me do that now. So you'll be able to look at the quilt before I get in the way. So take a look at what you can see. And hopefully I don't knock my lights over. All right, there, now I got these things that I want to talk about. Okay, so while this quilt is up on the wall, let me do this again. Let's take a look at it. So you see, this is the, whoop, there we go. This is the block that I had left. I probably changed these flowers because those flowers are left over from a different quilt that I have. Um, and then this, let me just point to it, um, that block, instead of just stitching the crazy part, I did it, but I can still see in the top corner of the dark part, it, it, I didn't totally finish it. So it's kind of silly that it's sitting around. Um, this block will be easiest to see right now. This block right here was a piece of fabric that I had gotten from my mom and I loved it so much. I didn't want to cut it into pieces for a quilt yet I only had a small piece of it. And I found that that shape was perfect for really showcasing that. Now, this isn't gonna to be too bad. So we, I will take it off and get you close up pictures or a close up view of it. But I can see this daisy right here. Um, that is a whole, there was a whole quilt top and Bare Roots was the designer. There was a Bare Roots pattern. The whole quilt would have been that one block. And I've shared before that I like to take different aspects of different quilt patterns and put them into one project because I have so many patterns. There is no way that I will be able to make all those quilts. So if I like one aspect out of one and one aspect out of another and that's what I did in this quilt and put it in one project that works for me and I'm, I'm too ADD and too distractible that I would not want one whole quilt just out of one block if I can have a lot of blocks so that's that's kind of my style so what else can I look at okay so I can see this, this design right up there. This is how I'm going to be able to show it. And then again, I will get a close up. Now that was from a whole book. My mom and my sister got me at a quilt show that they went to. They got this book for me. Um, what is it? Art to heart. And I have the only thing that I have made. Oops. I just pulled the tab out. Um, the only thing that I have made is that one block. Let's see if I can find it. I had it marked this morning for you. There it goes. Okay. That, there we go. That's the block from, from this whole book, but I showcased it and I put it in there. What else can I see? All right. Now, um, okay. So this block right here, um, keep your heart merry. You'll see it close up again. I don't even have that book anymore. I've passed that on. Um, but I wrote it down. It is a book called Two Hours Quilted Christmas Projects by um, Sherry Safiotti. So that was in a whole book. That was one block. And um, what else can I see? So let's talk about now the, the things that I went to grab were this tote. Now this tote I had shared in my um, I did a floss tube called All About Embroidery. And since then, I've done another embroidery floss tube. And I will do more because I keep getting more um, comments from people and some great ideas that I will share. Now, this actually was a pattern. And, and I believe it is still on sale. It is a... Um, oh, who is this? 
I want to say it's Bare Roots. No. Oh my goodness. It's either Bare Roots or Crab Apple Hill. I, I'm leaning more towards Bare Roots. This is a tote that I had shared close up and I, I wasn't sure if I had put this together because I made this I made this in 2007, I'm sure. Um, this is actually the pattern. She actually has it pretty much like this. So I just took this, not this block, because it was all hearts. I took this block. I took this, this block you'll see. Um, and I took, this has two of them, but I took that. And I put them into the quilt. So then you could see those are in there as well and there's some hidden down below i think there's a whole row that you are not able to see so i will put this pattern in the description box below i really try to load up the description box because um i i take notes i have a notebook i take notes and then i try to put those in the description box because I like to share a lot of tips and I want you to be able to find those easy because I'm not good at responding to comments in a timely manner. And part of it is my, I work on calls. So I, I can think, oh, I've got, I can sit down and do something and boom, I get called and I have to leave. So I'm really trying to be more organized just to help myself and to help you because I don't want you hanging thinking, I want that, I want that. So um, again, I share a lot about this in that embroidery video, so you can see now, since I have this here and then it's going to be awkward when I'm holding that whole quilt, let me show you some things. This is the close up of my embroidery and I do small stitches and I've shared about that in both of my embroidery videos. Then when I was first doing this type of, this is fusible. Um, I think it's called Fusible Web, and um, when I was first using that, I think I used Steema Seam. Whatever I used, it was thicker, and I had several quilts. That's how I first applique. That this is my first way of appliquing, and it's it's folk arty, in a sense. It's kind of folky cutie is what it is, and that's how I started. But you can see if there's two layers here, it was a thicker product. I don't even remember what it was. And then after a while, um, after, I don't know, maybe a year or so, it didn't stick anymore. And I didn't realize that. And I had bought a lot of it, so I had to throw it away. It was thicker. Now, recently, I have tried, um, there's two new products. There's Steema Seam Light or Steema Seam 2. And I, I have purchased that, but I haven't finished that product yet, or project yet. So I'm not sure how it's going to perform. But when I've been doing the Kathy Schmitz products, projects that I've been sharing on my floss tubes, there's something that I purchased called Soft Fuse. And it is very thin and um, it's very soft. And I, I, I'm really liking that because I will always do something on the edge. Now, if I was not going to do some type of stitching around the edge, that might not be the best because it's not holding those fibers together. But because of the way I do things, I think I'm going to like that Soft Fuse better. So you can see I use, um, well, I use one strand of DMC floss when I'm doing these and I just fuse it down and then I just stitch over it and some, some longer, some shorter on purpose, just, just cause I like the way it looks. Then when you're, I thought it was so cool at first when I was doing this and I still enjoy it because when it's farther away, it almost looks like watercolor where that, where that color is going is spreading into the fabric but in a lighter way so you'll like it if you see it and you like it give it a try um, and then this was also a pocket let's see what else I can share so if I go over to this one which is the heart I did use the over dyed flosses here so so these are over dyed and then when I do this this is I always use the DMC because um, it's just a good way to use the, the DMC, which is one, it's a good quality product. That, DMC and Anchor. Um, so again, these are pockets that I did. And then we can do a close up here, but it's the same thing that you'll see in my quilt, the same way I did this. So you'll see this has one, two, three layers. So this this is really stiff, almost like canvas. So, um, so that's a good way to show you now. This block right here, 
was from a tote that I had made and I don't think I've shared this in any of my other videos and the I just got them out of my cupboard today so they are wrinkled but this is a tote and this was in I I will eventually find the pattern I know it was from a magazine and I am pretty sure it's laundry basket quilts edit a sitar is what I believe this was so if I'm going to show you close and these are fig tree um, old, it's an older fig tree line of fabrics, but you can see it is very wrinkly, but you can see it was that same way that I did it. So the iron on fusing and I did the tote and, um, so I enjoyed it so much. I thought, well, that would be perfect because it looks like a heart. So I have that there. Um, before I take that down, those are, oh, you could just see Whoop, there we go, a pattern up there, and I will show you close up about that when I undo it. But that was from, my mom had been gifted a lot of quilt books by a friend of hers, and then she gifted them to me. And this is the only thing that I have made out of it. You'll see one of the blocks um, is this. So I did that, and then I probably did a heart. Yep, I just switched out the star for a heart. I do that a lot, because I, I tend to like hearts more than I do stars. And all the flowers are probably hearts. So that's what I did. That's the only thing that I've made out of this whole entire book. What else can I show you before I take that thing down? All right. Or not that thing. That is, that is, um, I was, I always going to say, that is one of my favorites. I do love that quilt. Um, and a lot of reasons why I love it. Um, but it's one that I call brain surgery quilts. So I was thinking a lot of people... Um, might think, oh, brain surgery, that's a, you know, for people that have brain surgery, that might be offensive. Here's something. Um, I went, I got to get together with some friends from high school um, a month or so ago, and, and it was wonderful. We all are far away, yet we still meet together. So that was 40 years ago. 40 years ago this year, I graduated from high school. Two, those two are, are um, treasured friends, longtime treasured friends. And I was, I was, sitting there at the table and I thought, oh my gosh, these two friends have had brain surgery. And, um, and we joke and we laugh and we love, we love life and we love each other and we like to joke. So I was talking to one of my friends afterwards and I said, oh my gosh, I call some of my projects brain surgery projects and I just realized today you guys have had brain surgery. Um, and then I just make brain surgery quilts. So that's how I say it in the heart that I say it not intending any, any issues or offense, but that's what I call, I just call them brain surgery quilts. So I've taken a very simple project or pattern. Oh, I can see the light playing. Um, I take a very simple thing and I turn it incredibly complicated and difficult. And then sometimes I decide enough, let's just get it done. This was one of those quilts. It, I started it and I started making, I, I made all the log cabin blocks. I, I can remember sitting down and making all those log cabin blocks. I'm going to share with you in a minute um, a, a, another project that I made from that book. And it was, I was a hot mess. And I didn't square anything up. I just got it done. I could see it was wonky. I didn't care. I was just madly sewing and so I call that crazy log cabin because I felt crazy. Yet when I did these, I was so determined to make these blocks perfect that um, I kind of ironed them to death as I was doing that. Luckily, I didn't burn it or, or stretch them out. But I really worked at nailing, nailing these accurately. So I ironed every, every row that I put on. I measured, iron trimmed everything. So again, I just made this one very complicated. This is the type of thing that I did. So I just took copies from the book so I could write and draw all over it. And I remember this was back when my sewing room was in my office. And um, it was a combined sewing and office room because I had another son in this bedroom. And I can remember sitting there um, with, oh my gosh, I had a cat that I don't have anymore too. So pumpkin was by my side and I had my cup of coffee. And I would just draw and get things out and figure out and do the math. I really enjoyed that. And I enjoyed it. It was fun. 
And so this is what I did. I would draw things out. And then later the next coffee day, I would think, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something else. And then I'm going to do something else. And then I'm going to add all these things. And then eventually I got to the point where it's like, enough, enough. I'm turning this into brain surgery. Just get this thing done. And that's what I did. I think I had planned on doing even more, which you wouldn't have even seen the pattern of the log cabin. And I think I figured that out. So it was like, done, just get it done. And so I did it and I love it. And I, I do really enjoy that I pulled a lot of different quilt patterns into that. I wanted to show you, I was digging through, actually this basket right here, I have three, I, they're very old baskets. I don't know what would be considered antiques, but they're very old baskets that I got from um, my grandparents' attic when I was, I was the first kid to get married or kid to get married of the grandkids. And so my mom and my grandma and I went digging up to see what I could do to fill my house up. And I, I loved old things back then. So I've had them, I've been married 37 years, so I've had them a long time. Um, but one of those baskets is my scraps. So I found these are the scraps left over from this quilt. So this is what I do. You know, I, I don't, I don't plan things out like how many how many strips am I going to need. I just get a bunch of fabric, cut them up. These are one and a half inch strips. Um, I just get a bunch of fabrics, strip them up because I know I will use these in other projects because Log Cabin is one of my favorite blocks. So I will use it. And even though this was from, my gosh, what is that, 15 years ago, I just got this out and I thought, oh, I'd love to make another project. But I also wanted to show you... Um, my friends so you could kind of see the crazy me and how I do things and not not the planner I am very very right brained and that to me is means not analytical not planning not budgeting um not doing any of that I just do it so let's get back to showing you more about that quilt okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna pop up on the chair and, um, and I only have them clipped up by a couple. So, um, hopefully, um, uh, hopefully seeing my backside, um, won't be for too long. So here I go. There we go. So I realized... Uh, hang tight. I'm sorry. This is my work. Um, so, oh, take a look at that while I'm doing this. All right, um, let me turn that on silent. So um, this is the quilt that I'll show you about in a minute. And I just realized this is the one that I called first love. This one is not first love. When I first started this video, I always do a practice run. So here I am 23 minutes into it. So those who stick with me this far have probably followed me <laughs> and know how crazy I am. So. Um, I'm so distracted because I, I was getting some work done, all this stuff is going on, trying to get this done, seeing if I even have time, and then I get loaded up to run out the door for work. I was so distracted, especially when I saw the bags under my eyes. And I always do a practice run and I say, you know, just to see, do I have the, do I have the volume up? Do I have everything up? I couldn't even remember the name of my channel. So that's where we are today. That's kind of like where I have been this whole month. So maybe I've got, maybe, maybe, um, <laughs> maybe I need some brain surgery. Um, so here we go. Here are some close-ups. So we have the hand stitching. So this is the hand, what I call modified big stitch. And I talk about that a lot in other videos, so I'm not going to go into it right now. I do the freezer paper applique and I still have not, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I still have not done my tutorial, not tutorial on how to do it because that takes a lot of thinking in this month. I've not had the brain capacity for that, but 
I hope to get that. I hope to get that one going soon. Um, and you can see the different heart shapes, and I really like that. Now, say that this book is not available, and you're not able to get it, and it, it's hard because um, it's hard because I'm really distracted. Um, okay, so I just got to tell you, this is like true confessions. I'm go I'm letting my hair go gray, and I've been doing that for a while, and that's not new. So it's been a year and a half. I've been letting it go gray or go natural. Oh my gosh, it's taken forever. And I can see this big wad of, of the old hair. Looks like dog hair sitting there. Let's do that. Oh man. Okay, it's it's one of those videos. So if you're new to my videos and you think I'm weird, I am. Welcome to, welcome to my channel. Okay. Um the other oh, so what I wanted to say is in case you can't get this book anymore, I'm just gonna let you know. These blocks are done with one and a quarter inch strips. This, this, and that's cut. So one and a quarter inch cut. This block, the center block, was a three inch cut piece. So obviously that's going to finish up smaller. The whole block finishes at seven inches. Now usually I will do a wider binding. Um, this one, because of I didn't want to cut off this to make it very small. I did a very, very small, narrow binding. I usually don't do them that narrow, um, but I did. And you can see this has been up there for a whole month. And yep, it is kind of squashed there. I can see that it's squashed, but I haven't torn and it, it will relax. So this is just the way that I do it. So there's the close-up of that block. And here's the close-up of this block. I really, really love this block and I have a feeling I've used it more than once. I have a Christmas quilt. Oh, that's what I have. I have a Christmas quilt in the making. I've sh I believe I've shared it before. Um, and I have this turned into more of a Christmas type quilt. Quilt block. So there's that one. Let's just do it this way. Um, here's this. Oh, this was from a whole nother quilt book. I made a couple things out of it and then I gave it away so I don't even know what block it is and you can see I kind of um, it it just barely fit I should have reduced it a little bit more but I didn't even notice that it cut off until just now and all this is so this is just this this block or this piece put on top of this fabric of a block what else do we have um, I love this fabric and I recently found another piece of it, and I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to be making a project bag out of it. So that was from the book that I don't have anymore that I gave away. Um, but I just like that. I just liked it. I liked really showcasing this this piece of fabric from my sister Ginger. Um, what else do we have? If we see it this way, okay. So um, here is that one block that I showed you from the edge of um, of that tote. These are blocks that were left over from another quilt that I made, and I liked them all, and I, I just made cut them to fit. Here's a close-up of the daisy, and I hope to find the name of the block, and I think when I was on, because I really think it was Bare Roots, and I think when I went on Bare Roots site, I saw that there. These are the close-ups, and because it's a spring quilt, I will be showing this quilt. I did a quilt, and these were the leftover pieces, and it was actually a double-sided quilt. Um, because I, I like to complicate things. Okay, there's that pocket. It just fit. I don't know if I reduced it or if it just happened to fit. This is the one that is not finished, and good grief, I need to just finish that because for whatever reason, um, that's still loose, so I need to get that done. Um, but this is like the crazy, crazy, what is it? Crazy quilt stitches. A lot of just different stitching, different pieces. You know what? These are all pieces that I used in that heart in the heart, it's on my wall. A uh, heart valentine that was in my embroidery one. Those are just still pieces. Those were from a charm pack square that I had of, um, who is that fabric? Nancy Halverson. Here is another close up block. Again, oh no, that's that. I think that's Blackbird Designs fabric. So that was not from mom, that was from me. This is hard on the arm. Um, so let's see. I'm a shoulder sleeper and it, it's showing up on my arms. Um, I love that fabric. Let's just see what's here. Okay, here is here is that um, the the tote. So you can see. Oh, this. Okay, this is different because this is the needle, not needle turn. I'm sorry, the freezer paper. So this is where the edges are turned under. 
and I do the blind stitch and stitch it down. Um, this is a pretty piece of fabric. This was just a nice way to showcase a piece of fabric. Again, I think that's Blackbird Designs. We've got this one. So just, I, I have a feeling I just drew those hearts out, maybe enlarged it, don't know. Um, and then this is, I think this is the last one. This is that piece of fabric I got from mom. Um, remember, it looks very Victorian to me, kind of a, a weird green background. But with that rose, it's very beautiful. So there you go. Um, and I know that was kind of a quick show, but that's, that's all my arm could handle um, as we were doing that. So um, if you have any questions, comment below. Hopefully within the next year, I'll get to them um, and, and see if I can answer some questions. So now I wanted to share with you more about what appliquilt means. So appliquilt was Tawny's way of doing a quilt fast. And um, what it involved, and I, it, I never did it, but I'm thinking there, there may have been some way to put a fusing on the back of the fabric, but you attached it to, you attached it onto the, onto the quilt. And then instead of a separate applique and quilting, like a hand quilting, process like where I hand, I appliqued then I quilted around it. Her idea was to take both of those um, concepts and do applique and quilting at once and thus applique quilt. But it would be a very, let's find a picture in here. It was more of a very primitive look which would not bother me but I would, I because of my arm and trying to stitch and flip the quilt. Whenever I have big quilts and I'm hand quilting, I really try to get continuous line, which is much easier on my arm. So when you're when you're doing hand quilting around something and moving it, it's harder on your arms and it's more awkward. So I just thought that that didn't sound fun to me. But um, I may, you know, it would be fun to try on a, a wall hanging. So you can see it's it's primitive stitching around the edge and it is not turned under, you know, it's just there and it 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 would be a fun thing to do. So I also wanted to show you while I have you while I have you on the line, while I have you here, um, I realized um, you probably haven't seen my my unfinished project of this. So this is what I call my crazy log cabin. I I'm I'm. I'm not only not techie, I really despise technology. Um, go figure when I have videos coming up. I don't like trying to figure something out if it doesn't work. I have not gone back. I think I still I still have one video in hostage, held hostage in I movie. And even though I've been offered very gracious help, it still sits there. So I think that was the one that I probably shared about that. So I'm just going to share quickly because eventually I hope to get that up. Um, so this is the one in process. This is the one that I called the crazy log cabin because I stitched without um, measuring and these none of these turned out straight. They're all kind of wonky. So some had narrower, some were wider. It is a chronicle of what I was feeling. I still remember it, um, what I was feeling at the time. So it is kind of a, a weird um, block. I, I think I would have, I loved, I saw my sister had one, I think it was all the way done and I loved hers. I, I think I would like the block a whole lot better if it was just applique, but this is what I did. So it's, it's, um, not finished and it's one that I am again, not quite turning it into brain surgery, maybe more outpatient surgery. So you can see there are no bird, blackbirds on there. There are no squirrels and there are no, um, cats on there, but you can see this edging. So let me give you a view of this and why it is still not done because I'm turning it too complicated. These are from a Blackbird Designs book and I think it's called Warm Heart, Warm Hearts. What else is on there? Um, then we have the, the, his bird friend and another bird friend. Those are at least, those are, those are stitched down. Then we have a squirrel that's from another book. Uh, 
that's from one of my needle love books and I have a pillow that I have shared before or goodness it could be in that it could be in that um, missing video um, and then here this was from a primitive quilts magazine so it is in process yet I also I have the box of a lot of those pieces so I just need to get get it done get it done so there we have that okay so now let me share about this quilt hopefully I don't know that you can really see it so I'm gonna turn the camera because when I'm doing the video what you actually see is a bigger picture of what I see so you know what so I don't mess it up I'm just gonna leave it there because I think you can see probably all the way to the end even though when I look at when I look I'm not seeing that so if I stand aside and let you look at this um, it is it is actually a pattern this one is bare roots because when I first was new both at quilting and embroidery I loved bare roots I don't know if this is still for sale but you can see I'll um, I will put this written down in the description box but you can see it and you can also see that can you see yeah there is supposed to be embroidery uh, a design of embroidery done and embroidery in the center of each one of those when I created this quilt I had every intent of doing all that embroidery and then as I got more and more into quilting I realized I have so many projects so I talked to my sister one time I remember we had gotten together for for we had met together and had um, had a day together and I showed her my stitching this was a a process this was the beginning I tried a way of doing applique didn't like it um, I was new at doing the blind stitch it was not going well and so I was just asking my sister she gave me tips she gave me some stitching tips on what to do then the other thing was um, what else was it that was weird about this one um, I needed to hide that was that was why I did um, I don't know if you can see from there but again I will pull this for let's just let's just do that now instead of taking this down because this one is a longer one I'm gonna pull this forward and hope that it doesn't yank it off the wall um, but there we go it's coming okay so this was her solution to me because as I was doing the stitching around these hearts to applique it down my stitches showed and they were not it wasn't what I wanted I wanted a beautiful project her suggestion was to do the blanket stitch around these so I did that blanket stitch when they were still blocks so that made it a lot easier to stitch um, yet the way that I chose to quilt this and I started this one was the one where I did start in 07 and I finished in 2011 when the quilting that I did oh my word I did that that's that was crazy okay this first layer so this first layer of blanket stitch was done when it was just a block oh no wonder my arms hurt now the second layer of blanket stitch that was that was the actual way that I quilted that I wouldn't do that now all I would do was do hand quilting around it um, because that must have been a pain in the neck then I also did these kind of stitches this was also how I quilted it and then I came over to this block and I just did that stitching in the center and then you can see I have hand quilting around this edge and I think I've shared about this before I don't like using the variegated thread when I'm doing a border anymore because when it's far away it looks like you can see this is the lighter if if I'm looking at it at the wall I can only see these light stitches and then the rest disappears so it looks like it's unfinished so I don't do that anymore yet over here this is how I um, I just hand stitched in between the light ones now um, I think that's all that I want to show you as far as the close-ups we'll get this down behind some stuff let's see if I can get that laying flat um, so it will be nice for you uh, that's that's good enough all right um, this was this was a total first Kind of a quilt thing because as I did these blocks I did not measure and I didn't trim this is how I learned you measure and you trim 
So when I did these, that's what you can see right now. You can see that there's an inner border, which here is on the outside, and there's an outer border, which was supposed to be on the inside. Now, as I look at this pattern, I like this much better because it really, I, I like it. Um, when I took, a, when I took a, a Borders and Bindies class, I still remember that the teacher said a border, it's called a stopper border. This is called a stopper border from what I remember. It is supposed to stop your eye and then it can go on to see what else is in the quilt. So if I look at this, I guess that, that would be the stopper border. Yet the way that I did mine, because I got so much going on in this quilt, it stops your eye and then it lets you see that. But the only reason I did that was because it didn't measure right. I had to figure out how wide to make that border to make it accommodate how big um, all those pieces ended up being. So that's the story behind this one. But it, it was good because that first quilt, it pleases me to look at it. And I'm glad I didn't embroidery the whole thing because, you know, I, I have a lot of quilts made and I can enjoy them. I actually, I was, I was looking at this and I thought, oh, it would be fun to do a small wall hanging like that. And I might because I, I have a lot of different fabrics. A couple things about this quilt. Um, when I was a brand new quilter, didn't have money, um, and... And I knew I would love the scrappy. So my mom and sister gave me a lot of their scraps. And um, and that was great because a lot of people don't want to keep scraps. And I am one who loves scraps. So I remember how fun it was because I've always enjoyed old things, old time ideas and concepts. And so as I was taking these scraps given to me and cutting out the blocks, whatever size those blocks are, I just had that thought of, oh, I'm like a pioneer woman. I'm taking scraps that someone was maybe going to throw away and I'm turning them into something useful. So that, that gave, I still remember cutting those out and thinking how cool this was and seeing, I love that there is a huge amount of scraps in there. The other fun thing is now that I look at that quilt, I recognize, oh, those are mom's fabrics. Those are Ginger's fabrics. Those are my fabrics. And that, that's what really pleases me about quilts. It's not cranking out a quilt fast. It's about all the details that go into it and how I love it. And even the label on the back is one of these hearts that was extra. I just put the information on it and then I actually did the blanket stitch on the back and it, it is beautiful. Um, so that's a fun thing. I have one more quilt to show you because I need to get that in the mail to my niece. Um, this quilt that I'm going to show you now is, um, I do not have one that I have made for myself with this. This is one of my mom's quilts. And my brother graciously let me borrow it for a while because it was important to me. And so this is, this is called, let's see if I can hold it up right. This is called the bullseye quilt. So I'm going to hold it up. Hope that you get to see it, and then I'm going to talk to you about it. So here we go. I'm going to hold it and just let you see it because I can't talk behind here. And then you can see the border. So if you are not familiar with the bullseye, which was a big thing a while ago, this is what it is. It is a block that was made, then cut into quarters, and then sewn back together again. And um, this is in its raw edge. And then of course, the, the, um, the applique around the edge is raw edge. And there's a beauty to that. If people don't like it, they're not gonna make this type of a quilt, but the, there's a beauty to this. Now, I don't have this pattern because I haven't, this was way before my quilting time and my mom, I don't think my mom owned the pattern because she just saw what my sister did and just did it. So some people can just see it and just do it. Um, I did, I just searched, I just Googled and I searched um, bullseye quilt patterns and the pattern book that my mom probably got this from, or my sister probably got this one. There's a book that I saw called Quilts from Aunt Amy, and I saw it available used on Amazon. Sometimes I will just buy a book because I think I might use it. As I And I was able to look at all the images in the book, and I thought, eh, 
I probably won't make any of the other quilts in that book, so I'm not going to buy it. But I also thought, well, I, I just, you could go on Pinterest. You can find bullseye quilts. You will find tutorials. Then I just Googled bullseye quilt. I probably just Googled bullseye quilt patterns. There were several tutorials that came up. One was, and they're in blogs though, so it's not a video I can link. I will add those to my show notes. One was a more traditional looking one. One was a more modern looking one and kind of like a wall hanging. And, and I thought, oh, um, that might be me because I have some more modern bright fabrics that I need to do something with. And I thought, yeah, I'd like to play around and do that. So I may be doing one of those, but I will link those below and share those with you. Um, so you can see, there's a couple things that I want to tell you about this quilt. Um, and I was just looking at the time to see how much time I have to share with you. So this is where my mom did the big stitch and she, she literally did it big. These are, these are what she called toe catchers. This is at least a quarter inch stitch. The problem with this is it comes out, it gets pulled. And, um, I, I am in the process because doing something for someone else is not my thing. I, part of me, that's part of me doing this. It's part of being selfish, but it's also part of like, this is my self-preservation, just doing what I feel like doing. So, um, I have several of the quilts that my mom has made for my kids and I'm, I'm having to re hand quilt them, whether it's the big stitch she did or whether it's her machine quilting were bigger stitches. They're coming loose because the kids used them. They were actually used. And so some stitching just can't handle that. But because my mom cannot redo them, I am redoing them, but it's a very slow process because I have a lot of my own projects to do. So that's where if I was to do this, it will be much smaller stitches, not so large. And I had found the pattern that she had drawn on and it was fun. She had just made a copy of the pattern and I saw her drawing of how she decided she wanted to hand quilt. You can see the hand quilting here. That's the orange peel. My mom loved it and I love doing the orange peel as well. And you basically just get circles and you lay them out in such a way. And she had all kinds of circles that she gave me. So they were like Tupperware lids. Um, I have one that I use a lot and it's a coffee can circle lid. Um, she had CDs, all kinds of things. And, and it's just a, it's a way that you make your own kind of a pattern. And then the other thing is I love this border and I love that it's scrappy. So you can see, um, it is just one piece of fabric. It's, she made a whole long, um, somehow I'll have to figure out how she did that, whether it was all done on the bias. I'll have to talk to my sister. Was that all done on the bias or were these all separate pieces? But it is it is so fun because it is that whole scrappy. But you can see, this is what happens. It's loose. It gets loose because it's raw edge and you trim it. So if that's not your thing, this again will not be the kind of quilt that you want to do. But my mom has also made one of these for me and it's a blue one. It's blue and cream and it, it's very large. She made it for our, our fifth wheel that we don't have anymore. And, um, and, and it's fun. And I will share that on another time. So, um, so this, I will trim, I will trim some of this stuff off. I'm going to wash it in gentle and I'm going to ship it out to my niece in Colorado because she is missing my mom very much. And, um, and I want to give it to her, but I am not so thoughtful that I'm going to re-hand quilt the whole thing. So I'm just going to let her know it's a delicate one. It's not a rough and tumble quilt. She's not a rough and tumble age. She's, she's a young woman. And, um, so I'm passing that along, but it's hard. It's hard to pass on my mom's quilts, even though it was given to her. I took it back for a while and it's going back, but it's always hard to do that. All right, so those are the quilts. Um, what else do I want to share with you? I'm glad that this is a little bit shorter. So this, I also share about the bracelets that I make. I made this one and I rarely wear it. Um, 
I rarely wear it because it was stiff, but it needs to be worn and then it gets soft. But these are wrap bracelets. I always link people to where I learned how to do these, which is just beadshop.com. That's actually the name of the shop. It's an online shop only. They have tons of videos, lots and lots of videos. This was just one where I learned how to do these stitches and I can see a couple things on here. I, this was in, I haven't made, I haven't done beading for about a year and a half now. And I was in a kick where I was for months, I, I just didn't stitch, I did beading. And that's how I do things, I saturate myself in things. So this was just a button and I know I got that like at Joann's, just a cool button. So this is the first wrap. These are all beads that my guess is all those beads would be available on beadshop.com. I've bought beads at different places, but I, I mostly buy online now at beadshop.com. Um, this is called the ladder stitch. There's an infinity stitch and there's a ladder stitch and there's directions. So on that, if you want to try, if I'm inspiring you to do some jewelry making, they have a check out that site. If you don't have any other place to learn, that site has a lot. There's a tab that you can click called learning. And I think there's even something called stitchology teaching you how to make all the stitches. This is just a transition bead and this is leather. I get my leather from them. I just, they have something called like lots of leather. It's just a bag of scraps. Sometimes I will order a certain leather in particular, but usually I just like scraps. This was a shorter, um, this was, this is just macrame. That was just getting these, getting these beads shoved up through this leather is kind of a trick, but that's just what I did. This, this one is like my favorite. And um, these beads I know I had got in some weird little shop in Utah as I was traveling. And these are some beads that, that are, are on the site. I think this was like aged mossy, but these are, these are in the, the, the older, it's like, they're not newer beads. I, I want to say they're in the tribal bead section. Again, it's been a long time since I've been there, but very neat, small seed beads. Um, and you can see these move They because this is like a one whole bead. So um, I, this is fun, but in the process, sometimes as you're doing this with, with the little tool that, that you burn it, it can come loose. And so I just need to fix it and do it. But I am not... I'm not enjoying so much of the mini wraps and the heaviness because I've shared before, I have, I've lost, um, I've lost a lot of weight, not just recently, but the other day I was getting out of my car and I thought, how much weight have I lost? Um, in my lifetime, in my lifetime, I gained, after I got married, um, I got married at about 20 pounds heavier than I am now, or maybe 25. Um, and then that first year I gained a hundred pounds. Again, 100 pounds and it was fun it was fun eating but it's not fun losing so in my whole lifetime um i've lost about 120 pounds then if you think about my skin was bigger and now it's not and now it's older and wrinkler i do have smaller wrists but i i find that those bracelets or any any heavy bracelet my skin just can't handle it. So I don't like the weight of that anymore. So if I was going to remake this one, I think I would just do a single wrap because I this is my favorite part of that. Um, and they do things called stackers where you can make one bracelet and then stack it with another and another. The only thing is then you've got a whole bunch of these parts sticking out. And if you guys ever follow Lauren Daigle, um, amazing young Christian musician girl, she's got an armful. I love her style. She's got an armful of those and all those the little edges are sticking out. So um, again, shorter video, 53 minutes. It's not so short. Um, and I know I was missing for a while. I was in what I called hide and stitch mode, but I also saw February as finish at February. And I had a whole list of things and I did a lot of finishes and I enjoyed it. So either I was able to stitch or talk about stitching and a lot of times I chose to stitch. So... Um, Thank you guys so much for being a part of my, a part of my world. I know a lot of you say that you feel like you're here hanging out with me because just my style, this is just me. This is how I do work. This is how I do everything. It's just, this is my style. I love people, um, but I also love to be an introvert. I like to be in front of the camera, but I also like to not be in front of the camera. So it just depends on my mood. And sometimes I got the crazy that I got to hide. 
and sometimes I feel very calm and chill. So that's how I can decide, do I want to record or not? So this would not have been a day unless I had pushed it because I'm a procrastinator. I had pushed this video um, past Valentine's Day, past the end of the month, and I thought, it's February, get it done, girl. So um, that's, that's why I chose to do it today, even though it's been in the midst of kind of some craziness. So um, thank you guys for being a part of this world with me. I love it. And then um, I'm going to put my glasses on because now this is what is the good stuff. And I know a lot of you, that's going to be distracting, but, but I'll leave it off for a second. I know a lot of you stay um, for the good stuff and you love it. And it's part of what you're in this with me. If, if you share the same faith with me or not, this is, this is, um, this is deep for me. This is where my stitching helps. Coffee helps, chocolate helps, food helps. But um, for our, for my life, um, it's Jesus, and it's it's how I can get through challenging times. Now these are the transition glasses, so they're the sun darkened them a little bit. Looks like I got a black eye. Um, but I was just deciding and praying about what to share with you guys today, and there's a lot of different things that have been going through my mind, and I've shared that on other videos. But I read this, and this is actually the Billy Graham Hope for Today. Um, our hope for each day. And this was actually today. Today is, I believe it's February 26th. And this is the evening one. So I'm going to read this to you. And then I'll talk about it because I want to get the glasses off because of the glare. So this is called the hand of God. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. That's Psalm 8411. In the midst of sorrow and trouble, this life has many blessings and enjoyments that have come from the hand of God. Think of the blessings we so easily take for granted. Life itself, preservation from danger, every bit of health we enjoy, every hour of liberty, the ability to see, to hear, to speak, to think, and to imagine. All these things come from the hand of God. Even our creativity to love is a gift. Uh, no, I'm sorry, because <laughs> I'm always thinking creativity. Even our capacity to love is a gift from God. Most of all, God has given us the gift of Christ. What should our response be? We can put it in one word, gratitude, but how do we show our gratitude? By giving back to God a part of what he has given to us. What have you done lately to show your gratitude to God for all that he has done and is doing for you? So um, a question to ponder. And then I was thinking, because like, cause this is what I call my faith journaling or my faith journey, The last, this last month has has. I've been in a lot of emotional thought turmoil. Um, and so as I'm going about my day doing the things that I do, there's a lot of different things that I do so I can get through the day doing what I need to do. Not, not everything I need to do because I'm, I'm a comfort, you know, I'm stitched for comfort. I do things for comfort. So I don't always do what I need to get done. But um, the things that have been helping me are this. Um, one time when I went to a counseling, um, during one of the speed bumps in our marriage, I went to a counselor and I said, I need to work, but I'm in some, such a mess. I can't even work. What do I do? And so she said, you need to work, you need to get things done, but you also need to process. So she knew I was a visual person or she just told me, and then this is what it works. So she said, imagine God's big, huge, capable hands. Then take that worry, take that heartache, take whatever it is, put it into the hands of God. He's able. You should always be able to do it, but we're always grabbing stuff out of his hands. Leave it in his hands. Do what you need to do. Come back. And then if you need to, take it back out again and talk to God about it. But you've got to separate yourself from your heartache so you can do the things that you need to do. And that's, that's what I've done. That's been decades and that's what I've done. So that's what I've been doing with all the things that are worrying me, personal stuff, political stuff, health stuff, yada, yada, yada. I take those things and put it in God's hands. And sometimes that's what I do before I go to bed at night. I put myself in God's hands. I put you guys in God's hands and that's what I do. I should just leave it there. Um, but, but this is reality is that we come and take it out. And that's one thing. Then the other thing, as I've been talking to some of my friends um, and talking with my husband and talking to myself, the thought is 
as a believer, because I am saved by the grace of Jesus Christ, I have not done anything to earn my way into being a child of God or getting to heaven when I die. Nothing I could do to earn it. It's simply God's grace because I believe in his son, Jesus Christ, and I asked him to forgive my sins, come into my life, and be my Lord and Savior. Because of that, nothing, as long as I am living under the umbrella of of doing the things that he wants me to do, like if I choose to sin and I get a consequence, I have taken myself out. That's what I've talked to my kids about. You, you go to the right or to the left of God's path. You get consequences, and that's kind of what's, it's on you. God's grace is still there to help us with it. But nothing can come at us without first going through the hands of God, if we believe in him and we are his. So that's the other thing that I've been thinking about is his hands, his umbrella over me. So those are just the way that I get through life, how I do things. And then just thinking about what has his hand given us? He holds our breath in his hands. He holds our life in his hands. And I like to think about, too, I'm the apple of his eye. So all those things are just images because I'm very visual that help me, help me get through the day. That's what I wanted to share with you and just wanted to share that hope with you. So thank you for all of those of you who stay all the way to the end. Um, It's a gift that you guys give back to me, and I appreciate that. So Um, I just want to thank you again for being part of my stitching family, whether you're new or long time from, from the months that I've been doing this. So thank you guys. God bless you. May you choose joy. Nevertheless, I've got to get to work. Bye guys.